Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena for yet more DIY fun. It's been a very busy week so far. We've been trying to get things ready before we move in here to the forward cabin. We need to finish painting, we have to finish installing the new pulpit, and cleaning. Lots and lots of cleaning. While Ava gets started on the cleaning marathon aboard Athena, I've come here to the workshop to take care of a couple of things. We got the arch and the pulpit back from preservation a few days ago, and in fact we've already had the pulpit installed. It's a great example of one of those boat jobs that's supposed to be a quick two-hour thing and then turns into a multi-day ordeal. The holes you see up here are used for through bolting the pulpit through the deck hole joint. And the holes on this side are positioned correctly, but the holes on this one over here were about five millimeters further inboard towards this flange here, and that caused a real problem. Right now, the pulpit is upside down, so this may be a little bit confusing, but the bolts go in here, there's a bag that slides in here, and there simply was not enough room between the head of the bolt and this flange here to fit the back. Unfortunately, to fix this issue, we had to remove the fully installed pulpit. So Ava and I took turns on doing the nuts in the delightfully cramped chain locker. We filled the holes in the deck hole joint with thickened epoxy and brought the pulpit up to the workshop to drill new holes. That might sound like a quick and painless job, but so far we've spent about two days doing what should have been a quick two-hour job. I have high hopes that today is the day we'll finally, finally be able to install the pulpit. Like I mentioned, we've also gotten the solar arch back from preservation. Ava and I have already spent a few hours mounting the cars to the square tubing, straightening one of the supports for the solar panels that got a little bent, shortening and mounting the tracks on the arch, and then finally we fixed the supports for the sliding solar panels to the arch. With this bit of square tubing up here, we're gonna be able to carry four solar panels instead of just two. There's gonna be two up on top of the arch and then one on this side that's gonna be able to slide out just like that. And another solar panel over here that's also gonna be able to slide out. So there's gonna be a solar panel resting on top of this square tubing here and another one resting on top of this support up here. And these little cars can lock in place so that the solar panels won't slide in and out. With this monstrosity, we'll be able to carry just over 1200 watts worth of solar, which is a lot for a 38 foot boat. Now we won't be able to sail with these panels extended, but that's okay. They're more so intended for use when anchoring. The nuts and bolts we need to secure the aluminum track to the stainless arch are supposed to arrive tomorrow. We also need to devise some kind of way of separating the aluminum from the stainless so we don't end up with a ton of corrosion. And then hopefully on Saturday, we can convince Martin and Karina, the cement boat people, to lend us a hand with getting this thing mounted on Athena. Before I head back to Athena to install the pulpit, I'm gonna apply a coat of this clear epoxy to the countertop for the vanity in the head. I've never used this resin or this particular hardener before, so this will be a little bit of an exciting experiment. We had a little bit of a hard time figuring out how we should seal this. If we should just go with oil or maybe just a varnish or epoxy and varnish. In the end, we settled for epoxy and varnish, and hopefully that'll work out. This stuff has a mix ratio of 100 to 48, and it should clear to a nice, well, glassy finish, and it should be perfect for applications where you need to apply many thin coats. So yeah, there are other epoxies that are better if you wanna pour like a big giant blob of clear epoxy, like you see some people do with countertops. But yeah, I've never used this stuff before, so this will be exciting. The epoxy is very easy to apply, and here is what the vanity countertop looks like after the first coat. I haven't checked this yet, but I imagine we'll do something like three coats of epoxy, then a light sanding, and then a couple of coats of varnish to give better UV protection, but uh, I'll double check that later today. We marked and drilled the new holes, got butyl on the bolts, and smushed the thing in place. And as you can see here, I've put in place the temporary lifelines. The back is not on there yet because we still have to put in the tow rail, but Athena now has a pulpit. While it took the better part of two days, I am so relieved and happy to have the pulpit finally in place. Now, let's go see what Ava's up to. Well, my husband-to-be has been very busy rebuilding our entire new boat. He's also been very busy accumulating lots of sawdust. So before we move aboard, although mess did not feel it as necessary, I would like to clean the entire forward cabin. I spent some time earlier this week cleaning the galley and the saloon, 
and I may have even vacuumed and wiped down all of Mess's tools, but I know this is construction site. I know it gathers a lot of dust, but we're gonna clean it up. We're gonna de-dust. As you can see here, there's a lots of dust. So we're gonna start by pulling everything out of the forward cabin. I'm quickly learning that on a boat to clean one mess, you must make another. Okay, I've cleaned everything out of here and now it's time to vacuum. I'm going in. As I'm feverishly vacuuming all this, I can hear mess and my brother-in-law saying, gentle Ava, gentle. That was a lot of vacuuming and a lot of dust. I actually cannot believe Mess has been sleeping in that amount of dust, but it's over now. And the good news is I was actually a little bit nervous about what it would be like to clean in between these slats, but they clean up pretty well with the brush nozzle of the vacuum. I started cleaning inside of the locker and the drawers and I'm just using a bucket of water and what I am assuming is the Danish version of Pine Saw. Luckily, it hasn't been extremely difficult to clean everything. It's mostly just about wiping everything down. There's not a lot of like dirt and grime to scrub. There's just, I don't know, have I mentioned it? There's just a lot of dust. Ooh, everything's so shiny and nice and clean. Almost ready for us to move aboard. There's just a few things we need to do, like build this support right here. We're closing this in. We decided we don't really need it, and we don't want anybody to fall through the hole, i.e. me. We also picked up some carpet squares. We're putting these throughout the forward cabin here. We weren't really sure what to do because we don't have our floor picked out for the saloon, but we saw these at the store the other day, and we thought it might make the forward cabin feel a little bit homey. So we should be installing these within the next day or two. And last but certainly not least, we need the beloved cushions for the V-berth and for this little seat right here. Mess will be bringing those back from the workshop when he brings a little insert here. Now, that's everything that needs to be done before we move aboard, but we're still gonna have a few small jobs to do while we're living aboard. Hopefully it won't create too much dust. For instance, we need to make the countertop for the freezer area and the washer and dryer area. We have to build a shelf in this locker along with the door fronts for here and for these lockers, all the fronts of the shelves and the hanging locker and just a little bit of trim. I come bearing a long stick. The previous owner made an attempt at fixing a little bit of an issue with the support for the insert in the V-berth. That involved these little guys held in place by some nails, but as you can maybe see, some of them are cracked here. So if we're gonna have the insert permanently in place, I prefer something that's a little bit more sturdy. Something beefy like this glued and screwed in place should do a much better job. I'm sorry, my friend, but you are an outdoor saw now. This is gonna look a little something like this. Once these are glued and screwed in place, this will maybe not hold a full-size elephant, but at least a small one. I've asked my lovely epoxy mixing assistant to mix up some thickened epoxy, and she's doing a great job. A clean boat and epoxy on demand. Life is pretty sweet. A little dab will do. And just like that. Now, because we're going to leave this in place permanently, I think we're just going to add a couple of tiny screws to make sure this doesn't bounce out of there. The brand new super spiffy cushions are waiting outside, but before we put them in, we're gonna put this mesh in place. This stuff is nice and squishy. The purpose of it is to make sure that any condensation that forms underneath the cushions are not gonna get sucked up into the cushions. This just provides a little bit of air in between the plywood and the cushion. This stuff is sold under different names, but it all works the same way. It is squishy stuff that allows air in underneath the cushion. Now, during the summer, this is enough to prevent condensation, but it is not enough during the winter. During the winter, we're going to have to add some insulation, so it'll be plywood, 
insulation, squishy stuff, and then cushion. With the squishy stuff in place, it is now time to add the cushions. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Well, it looks like they fit. Yeah. And that's what it looks like with the insert in place. I think this looks pretty dang spiffy. And there's also Ava's little reading nook over here. It's Saturday morning and for the past week we've been staying at Mess's parents' house while we finish a few things in the forward cabin. And today we are hauling all of our stuff, all of Mess's stuff, back to the boat to move aboard. It's been great to stay with my parents. They're lovely people. The only downside is the drive. It's pretty long. It takes an hour and a half to get to the marina and then it's an hour and a half to get back home. On the plus side of that, it's a beautiful ride. There's a snack shack that Mess never let us go to. There's a lovely shot of the fjord and some beach cows. There they are. More regular farm cows. And many, many roundabouts. Roundabout. Ah! Yet more beautiful views of the fjord. We always get a little sneak peek of the water conditions. There's a few white caps. Right now we're heading to Athena to pick up some stuff. Then we're gonna head to the workshop where the cement boat people are gonna help us dry fit the solar panels. And then hopefully, hopefully install the arch. At the workshop, Ava and I started by tightening the 86 nuts and bolts that secure the aluminum track for the sliding solar panels to the arch. We have thick UV resistant plastic separating the aluminum from the stainless and we have plastic washers separating the fasteners from the track. The solar panels are big and bulky but we managed to get the top two panels in place and line them up perfectly using a little bit of square tubing. The two panels were secured to each other with some clamps and then lined up on the arch before drilling any holes. The cement boat crew showed up just in time to help with the bottom panels. Those are the panels that are going to be able to slide. There were a few minor adjustments required but then it was on to more hole dwelling and uh, voila, we now have sliding solar panels. Getting the arch to the boat was a little bit of a struggle. It's not exactly a lightweight contraption. We used a halyard to help lift and hold the arch in place on the boat while we got the first couple of bolts in place on the starboard side. All of the holes were drilled and then sealed with a bit of butyl tape. For lowering the arch in place, it worked really well to use a stick. This gave us a little bit more control and made it easy to line up the bolts before lowering the arch into place. We were all really excited to see the dinghy arch in action and it looks like it'll do a great job of keeping the dinghy out of the water while at anchor. Then it was on to fitting the four giant solar panels. I don't think Ava and I would have been able to do this without the help of Martin. Now from this angle, it looks like I'm attempting to turn Athena into some kind of airplane. In real life, the extended array doesn't look quite as giant. Here's what the arch looks like with the solar panels retracted. I am so relieved to finally have this thing on the boat. This all started six months ago with a wooden prototype. And yeah, here we are with 1200 watts worth of solar. Like I've mentioned before, we can't sail with the solar panels extended, but that's not really what they're intended for. They're intended for use while anchoring. And what we've got here is basically just another take on the boat you see where there are solar panels mounted on the lifelines. I like the idea of having the solar panels up there instead of down here, because that way there's nothing in the way, or at least right now. We'll see what happens once we start mounting the grill and other stuff in this area. I know it's a silly little thing, but I've been looking forward to mounting Athena's temporary lifelines on the arch for months. Little things like, for instance, the lifelines just make a big difference in the appearance of a boat. Of course, you'll have to imagine Athena with her wooden tow rail in place that's going to run all the way along the deck hull joint. But hopefully we'll get to that in the next two weeks. Pick the digging up from the workshop and now we're going to inflate her and see if she fits up on the arc. All we've got for now is the pump that was included with the dinghy. It seems pretty decent, but maybe an upgrade would be worth it. I've connected two lines to the dinghy, one forward, one aft. Now we'll have the daintiest crew member do the pull-in so you can see that it's easy to raise. Since Mess is busy, I'll do it. Rah, 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 rah.
It's still easier though, right? Yeah. Okay. After a little bit of an adjustment, as you can see, she sits pretty nice here. Mm -hmm. This is, of course, like I've mentioned, only for when we're anchoring on passages and stuff. This is going to go up on the deck. In case you're wondering, this is an aluminum bottom and it's got these eyes welded into it here and here and one forward right there. So this should be very sturdy and a good place to lift the dinghy. This little fender strippy doodad sits up against the pipe here, but yeah, some way of making sure that this doesn't bounce all over the place or start sliding and chafing might be a good idea. So hopefully with this lowering racing doohickey, we'll be able to pull the dinghy out of the water so we don't get any growth on the bottom without having it be too big of a deal. Last week you guys saw us put all of these tasks on the board. It's been a week, so let's see which ones we can move. Well, we can definitely close this one, which is drill holes for cables in the arch. There's also the one below it, which is polish the arch and the pulpit. There is this one that is mount the arch and the pulpit. Mm -hmm. And then we have this one, which is install solar panels on arch. Yep. Well, I can move this one, clean the boat, to doing, because that seems like the never-ending project. There's definitely still a lot of work ahead of us, but we did manage to close four tasks this week, which I think is pretty good. Next week, I think we might do even better. Usually I like to end these videos by just trying to at least kind of predict what I'm gonna be working on next week, but we haven't really decided yet. We're gonna do a bit of planning while this video is rendering. So yeah, we'll figure out sometime later today. Even though we don't really know what we're gonna be working on next week yet, we still hope to see all of you guys back here aboard Athena next week for yet more DIY fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.